$539 per month for Social Security beneficiaries. I have all the details and what these shocking numbers mean right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, first off, let me ask you this much. What would an extra $539 do for you, your life, and your livelihood each and every month? I think it's pretty obvious. It would be absolutely life-changing for the vast majority of people, especially living on a small fixed income benefit from Social Security. Well, based on some new information that was recently released, this is exactly how much more you should be getting on average on top of your regular monthly benefit. So let's get into it and discuss all the details behind this and where this extra $539 per month is actually coming from. So let's get right into it. However, really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video. I am your one and only daily advocate and I am very much committed and dedicated to you and this community to continue doing all the research, breaking it all down into these short videos and keeping you updated with what is really going on right now during this very busy time, especially as it pertains to your monthly benefits, money, benefits, programs, checks, reforms, Form, new bills, propo uh, proposals, packages, and anything else that may be coming up right here, right now, they may be impacting you, your monthly benefit, and so much more on a monthly basis. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And let's get into it and discuss $539 that should be all yours. All right, let's get into this. All right, so as we all know, there's so much information coming out right now about Social Security. It's kind of interesting because generally you don't hear all this much information coming out about Social Security. However, it seems that lawmakers finally recognize that there's some uh, some issues going on with Social Security, especially for the beneficiaries, simply not getting enough money right now on a monthly basis. It's just interesting to see that so many lawmakers are coming out. We're seeing so many new bills, proposals, packages, so many people coming out talking about reform to Social Security and to raise benefits uh, for all those benefits under the Social Security umbrella, which includes Social Security retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, and of course, SSI, even though SSI is not technically Social Security, but it is still within the Social Security umbrella because it's administered by the Social Security Administration. So it's very interesting and it's actually very encouraging to see how many lawmakers are actually coming out right now talking about all this and how they actually want to do something. Now, will they actually do something? I guess that's a whole other question and topic, which hopefully they'll get something done here because these small fixed income benefits that most people are living on right now are not sustainable and it's just it's simply not enough, right? It's simply not enough. We all recognize this, especially with everything going on right now. However, the icing on the cake is, of course, this new report that was out talking about an extra $539 that technically you should be getting on average, or what I should say is for the average beneficiary right here, right now, as a result of possibly a little bit of calculation errors over many, many years. Let me tell you the details about this. So this was actually brought to light by the Senior Citizens League. Now remember, the Senior Citizens League is a, a great big advocacy group and powerful group that is also you know, advoca uh, advocates for fixed income beneficiaries, especially social security beneficiaries as well. So this is good. We want to follow what they're doing because you know they also have a pretty uh, pretty big impact and influence as to what's going on and they have direct contact with uh, lawmakers right there in Congress so of course we want to stay on their side and uh, continue supporting what they're doing anyway a new report that was brought to light by the, uh, the Senior Citizens League is showing exactly this. So basically what it comes down to is we all recognize that maybe all of this inflation data that we've been seeing recently, and maybe all the inflation data that we've been seeing over the last, I don't know, 20, 22 years or so, since back in 2000, uh, 2000 the year 2000, Y2K, <laughs> remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do, I remember that. That was kind of funny, right? Anyway, going all the way back to Y2K, the year 2000, so basically 22 years ago um, from right now. Here's what's happening. We're basically looking at it and thinking that all of this inflation data that we've been seeing over the last couple of years here and basically over the last 22 or so years has always been fully accurate and the calculations uh, coming out for Social Security beneficiaries have also been adjusted to the uh, inflation data that's been released, right? Well, yeah, maybe, but maybe not so much. 
So here's what's going on. Because of the way that the, the annual cost of living adjustment is actually calculated each and every year, just for one minor adjustment to weigh the way that the annual cost of living adjustment um, has been calculated, and if it would have been calculated this other way, actually, which better reflects the actual living expenses and um, you know the actual costs that most fixed income beneficiaries, as in social security beneficiaries, actually incur on an ongoing monthly basis, if the COLA would have been pegged to that rather than how they actually do peg it right now, which by the way, the annual cost of living adjustment is pegged off of uh, the CPIE, or sorry, the, the CPIW, the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Workers and Clerical Workers is what it's pegged off of right now, the CPIW. However, they want it to be pegged off of the CPIE, which is the Consumer Price Index for the elderly, which better reflects the actual living expenses for fixed income beneficiaries. Just that one little simple adjustment would actually have accounted for an extra $539 on average for the average beneficiary every single month to your monthly benefit just because of that one little thing. So here's the thing. This is all based on the annual cost of living adjustment. Just because this um, has been running behind the times here over the last 22 years, because of time and compounding is why this actually would have added up to uh, basically $540 a year, $539 and change uh, every single month for all of these beneficiaries. So if it just would have went into effect, and that's what they're trying to do right now with uh, the Social Security 2100, as well as the Social Security for Futures Generations Act from Al Lawson, again, another representative and another piece of legislation floating around out there, uh, as well as the president's plan and even Bernie Sanders' plan to reform Social Security. Just this one simple little fix, changing the way that the, uh, the COLA raise is actually adjusted each and every year from the CPID just to the CPIE would have accounted for an extra $539 every single month, again, on average for the average beneficiary. Now, some people may have been higher than that, some people may be lower than that, but that's the average amount that it would have calculated out to if this would have went into effect essentially 22 years ago, way back in Y2K, the year 2000, right? So, you can see here, just because of time being on our side over long periods of time and compounding as in, you know, maybe you get a 1% raise this year, a 0.6% raise next year, a 0.3% raise the next year, a raise of 1.2% the next year, because of all of this and compounding on top of each other year after year after year over long periods of time, in this case, 22 years, or technically it's back, uh, it's basically 21 years is basically what it would come down to uh, just because of how the calendar sits as of right now. But because of all of that, that's actually how it's adjusting for, right? So that's incredible. One little tiny adjustment. And here's what they're now saying about this. According to many other reports out there and what is talked about uh, in regards to uh, reforming Social Security, if they continue to wait on this, as in adjusting the way that the, uh, the annual cost of living adjustment or COLA raise is actually calculated, if they continue to sit on their hands and they don't change the way that this is adjusted for uh, each and every year, this is going to account for even more money going forward into the future. Just think of this much. If they actually adjusted it this year in 2022, it would actually account for about a 1% additional raise to your benefits going forward in 2023 just because of making this one simple adjustment because we're expecting a potential historic raise to Social Security as a result of the COLA going into 2023. Let me tell you this much. As of right now, the current way that uh, the cost of living adjustment is calculated, the CPIW right now, is running at about 8.6% for a potential raise next year in 2023. However, Based on the CPIE, if they actually were to implement that right now, that would actually be sitting at 9.4% right now. So it's actually just a little bit less than 1% extra. So it'd be 0.8% more of a raise just by making that one simple little calculation adjustment, right? That alone would adjust the COLA next year from 8.6 to 9.4%. Incredible, right? Just imagine doing that every single year for 22 years, and now you can quickly see how $539 basically vanished uh, pretty much out of everybody's check, how it should have been there, but essentially it's not because of this one little accounting error, right? Well, it's not really even an accounting error. It's basically just the way that the rules were set. So they're trying to, sh to change those rules, which again, 
It's not going to be like an immediate huge raise for many beneficiaries, but at the end of the day, again, over long periods of time, and as this adjustment continues to go into effect over long periods of time and compounding, this could also result in significantly more money going forward into the future. So anyway, there's some lawmakers out there right now who are saying, let's get this done. Let's change the way that the cost of living adjustment is calculated each, each and every year to better reflect the actual living expenses and those uh, expenses that many fixed income beneficiaries actually in occur every single month. I don't know. Very interesting, right? So <clears throat> this new information was adjust, um, released and I wanted to share with you in this video because it shows you how maybe, you know, the program isn't quite perfect. However, they're still working on that and trying to make it perfect for all the millions of beneficiaries. However, in the event they actually do this, then of course, we're going to be dealing with that insolvency issue once again, where they're going to be saying, hey, just wait here. Now we've uh, adjusted the COLA because of all this. We're giving out more benefits every month. And now that means that we're going to be going uh, insolvent much sooner. But again, regardless of whether they're insolvent in five years or insolvent in 15 years, the fact of the matter is Congress has to do something no matter what. So why not make the benefits a little bit more uh, reasonable and something that somebody can actually live on going forward? Kind of makes sense? So anyway, hope this helps you out. Again, I just like to keep uh, you posted with everything going on, especially as it pertains to all these new reports, the new information that's coming out as it relates to Social Security, SSDI, retirement, survivors, SSI, VA, RRB, as well as anything else that may be coming out right here, right now for the low income, seniors, no income, older adults, people with disabilities, and pretty much all of you right here in this community to help you out in any way that I possibly can. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out some of the other thousands of videos right here on the channel. Enjoy your day. Until next time, have a good one, and I'll catch you again later in the next video.